YouTube. Thanks for joining me again. I am Meredith Morakovitz alongside John Schwartz. Wow, that took you a while. Too much. <laughs> it was a lot. It was a lot, right? Yeah. Okay, John Schwartz. He is the deputy editor for Yankees Magazine. Here wow, that is a big title. What does that even mean? You know, I just edit the Yankees, essentially. I, I, I'm a deputy level. <laughs> you just edit them? You're like, no, no, I'm not feeling this one anymore. Not on a senior See level. <laughs> no, no I, I, uh, we write a lot of stories. We put out a magazine every month, and we cover the team and really just try to tell a lot of in-depth and detailed stories about the guys and their backgrounds. How long have you been with Yankees Magazine now? Because I know I've seen you around for a lot of years. I, I was just trying to figure this out. I think this is my seventh season now. Wow. Seventh season, yeah. And Just before that, I did about 10 years with Major League Baseball. Best seven years of your life? I mean, what could be better? <laughs> now, you've written a ton of stories over the years. Is there one that stands out to you that you're like, wow, that was pretty awesome that I was able to be a part of that? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes. But, well, yes. Um, I Don't mind me. spent about a year chasing down Esteban Florial and oh, cool. the fact that I couldn't figure out where he was from because... He was listed as being from Haiti, and I thought that was really interesting because there's never been a Major League Baseball player from Haiti. And I kept kind of running into him at different events or different, um, you know, minor league camps. I saw him at the Futures game. I saw him at the Arizona Fall League. And he's a super nice guy, really interesting. And I kept asking him about the Haiti stuff, and he would say to me, I'm not from Haiti. And I was, okay, you know, maybe there's a language issue here because yeah. you're listed as being from Haiti. And it turned out there was just this fascinating story that there was an issue with his paperwork when he was a kid. Um, he didn't have papers and he was trying to enroll in elementary school and his mother found this um, set of papers and she used it for him, never thinking that she was trying to do anything would, other than yeah, get, get him, him into, into kindergarten um, in the Dominican Republic. That's so crazy. And so they had to essentially, when uh, he was gonna be the biggest signing for the Yankees that year, but right when they were about to do it, Major League Baseball said, you know, this guy, he, his identity doesn't check out. And, made, and so they wouldn't let him sign and suspended him for a year, and they basically had to spend a year recreating his identity um, by basically they had to establish residency for his mother, and the only place they could do that where her papers were was Haiti, so he was able to get a Haitian passport. But for years, they said he was from Haiti, despite the fact that he had never been, to, been Haiti to Haiti in his Haiti. life. Yeah, that's and so, so wild. And so, for some reason, I don't even know why, he trusted me and let me tell the story, and it was about two years ago, and it was pretty incredible. He is a major outfield prospect for the Yankees. For those of you who do not know, Estevan Florial covers a ton of ground, ton of athleticism out there on center field. And had he not been injured last year, you wonder whether or not he would have made his way up to the big leagues. I will say, and this is not necessarily relevant for anyone because I don't know where he's going to be this year. He is the person who put on the single most remarkable athletic feat I've ever seen in my life, which was batting practice on a dirt field in the Dominican Republic. I saw him do a true sprinkler of boom, 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 boom. I've never seen anything like it in my life. I've never seen body control like that in my life. It was the most remarkable thing. How much time have you spent down the DR? By the academy or just with guys in general? I just did my second trip this year. Nice. Finished my story about it today, so I'm pretty happy right now. And it's fun. It's fun to go down there and see that stuff. The academy down there is super impressive to me. I was down a couple of years ago, and the fact that they have that type of facility, that they're finding guys to sign and to really develop their skills at such a young age is pretty neat. It's really cool, every part of it. I mean, just from the sense of it as like a, you know, living institution in a sense where these guys are getting, you know, all their meals, all their, you know, it, it's full service for them. And obviously you go out into the field then and you're just watching, you know, this amazing talent and it all kind of runs together and they're raw. And, you know, I mean, this isn't like, you know, going to a triple A game. You forget how young these guys are sometimes. Well, I mean, the reason I was down there, spoiler or whatever, was for Jason Dominguez, who is really young. <laughs> I mean, he's yeah. now 17 when he was 16 when I was there. But my God, it's like you look at him and you're just looking at like a truck of a person and you're like, you're 16 years old. Pretty cool. He's going to be cool to watch. You'd be intimidated by him is what you're saying. I was indeed. <laughs> uh, major Yankees news uh, everyone has heard by now. Luis Severino, TJ. That's I, right I don't now. even know what to say. I mean, I, I, I'm, I really hurt for him. Yeah. I mean, it's just there's, no, there's nothing I can say objective or whatever other than that's just horrible. Yeah, you know what, he came into spring training and he had this aura about him. It seemed like he had so much confidence. He was so ready to prove that last year 
was a fluke, he could stay healthy, that wouldn't be an issue, and unfortunately that's not going to be the case this year. And aside from on a personal level, you feel for Severino, from the team perspective, they're now going to need to find a way to fill that void. It's going to be hard. I mean, we were talking about this before, you know, they did everything you could have hoped that they would do in the pitching market this year yeah. already. Like You can never criticize what the Yankees did in preparing for the 2020 season in the pitching market by getting Garrett Cole. And now it's like, you know, y- you you watch all these guys who we've been watching, you know, kind of, you know, you wonder why are we watching spring training games when, you know, <laughs> you see one inning of the guy you know, and then you watch eight innings of the guys you know, well, it's like, well, you got to see it. what else is yeah. out there, right? And, you know, one of the benefits of my job that I really enjoy is I do get to spend, I'm not, you know, locked to the team for 162 games so i do get to spend some time in the minors and it's fun for me to get to watch some of these guys develop i got to spend a decent amount of time last year with davy garcia i don't know you know a month ago i would have said we're not going to see davy garcia anytime soon but yeah each level right. of this stuff maybe we will you never know you and, never know you know it's fun now, as a deputy editor, do you have to carry a badge wherever you go? I do. I do. Not, not the full-size badge, though. It's the one that says deputy. So when you get into the clubhouse, it's like, nice. It's like your credential and then a badge. Precisely. And then most people don't talk to you until they see the official badge. And the good thing is, often, like, the sheriff gets shot, but they don't shoot the deputy. So it's fine. <laughs> Jack Curry would have loved that. Jack Curry would have loved that. Nice work out of you. Uh, so how does it all work in Yankee Land, Yankees Magazine? How do you guys decide per issue, who you're going to feature. <laughs> you straws, straws, straws? <laughs> sometimes, literally, sometimes, yeah. Sometimes it's, we haven't done this guy in a while. <clears throat> sometimes it's, man, every other story we've discussed right now is about a pitcher, Some, so let's pick a hitter. And sometimes, you know, there's stuff that I'm working on right now that I'm kind of positioning for September already, um, knowing that, like, this is a story I want to chase all year. So when that happens, you know, you can basically, you know, put it out there to the rest of the team, like, hey, keep your hands off this story. Like, this is what I'm working on. Other times, you know, sometimes there's just something that's going on. If there's a milestone that's happening, obviously we're going to do it. But we try to have variety. We try to mix history. And we try to mix, uh, you know, um, the current guys. And what I really like to do is, I don't know, I've been in baseball clubhouses now for going on 17 years, which is actually not that long if you look at the Yankees beat. Yeah, so but it, it's a while. And... You know, I'm writing, when I'm writing long ter- long form features and things like that, there's just only so many times I want to write about the same person. Mm-hmm. There's only so much to say in 3,000 words about the same person. So I had a lot of fun last year by trying to really branch out and do some stories way away from the ballpark. Um, you know, I, I did a story that was about Cece, but that really was about Amber, Cece Sabathia, mm-hmm. but it was really about Amber, his wife. You know, I did a story about the, everything the Yankees were doing with Stonewall last year, which was one of the more rewarding stories I've worked on. So stuff like that. I did a story about the Yes Network's own Blake Shear, um, which- We love you, Blakey. We really, really do. Um, she was super she helpful. She homegrown for us. She does a tremendous job. She's one of our best producers. We have a lot of great people. I don't want to diminish anything that anyone else does, Absolutely but she's not. a superstar, right? She's the best. And, and so the, st- oh, not the best. she's one of the best. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the, that story was, you know, again, it's Yankees Magazine, so I need to, bring it back home all the time. So that was my Davy Garcia story. I actually told a Davy Garcia story through the lens of homegrown, essentially. So it was as much focusing on her as it was on Davy Garcia, and I had a lot of fun doing that. A lot of years, a lot of articles. I don't know, you know. Best or favorite interview over the years? Individual interview or? Individual, be- yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> I know, there's like 9,000 to choose from. I'm putting um, on the spot. So, my, my the the one time that my jaw hit the ground mm-hmm. the most, I was doing a story on Carlos Beltran and he was on the Yankees and it was pretty clear that he was um, not going to be around much longer. So we wanted to do a legacy story. It ended up being right before he was traded. Um, and I was talking to Dylan G, who was I think with I think he was with the Rangers at that time. If I'm getting that wrong, I apologize. But everybody's going to call you out. I know. Yeah, that's Definitely. Do you know the viewership to this thing? I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I blew it. Um, you had me here. Um, and, you know, he was just a guy who knew Carlos from their time in the Mets. Yeah. And all of a sudden, I don't know why, he starts telling me about this Trace Leches cake that Carlos would make. And I'm just like, I think you misunderstood my question. <laughs> or, <laughs> but about the baseball, he's yeah. like, no, you don't understand. He made this cake. Was, did he make it or did Jessica he, make it? No, no, no. So what he told me was that Carlos... And, and Jessica, I mean, right? That's his voice name? Yes. Yeah. What he told me was that Carlos once had um, 
of Tres Leches cake that he thought was the best he'd ever had. And because he's Carlos Beltran, and because he's a perfectionist in every way, um, he decided he had to learn how to make this and he had to learn how to master this. And so what Dylan G told me, and take this for what it's worth, was that on days when Beltran wouldn't be in the lineup, they knew that after the game, there'd be Tres Leches cake. Because he's sitting in the back making cakes? Apparently. That's and amazing. I'm saying, and, I'm looking, and, I, I, and he confirmed it to me, not giving me the whole thing. He's like, yeah, that's true. And I was like, how, is, how in the world is this a thing? But that's Carlos Beltran. That's pretty wild. Was there one interview that you did where you were like, oh, man, that, that did not go as planned? We are like, wow, that really yeah, took a... Just, just about every other one. Yeah, every other yeah, one. Yeah. <laughs> where you're like, that is not what I was hoping to get out of that. Ugh. They're mostly okay. Yeah. Uh, I will tell you, there was another time, also with Carlos Beltran, where we were in Puerto Rico with him at his in his hometown of Manati, and he took us to this restaurant he loved, and you know goes into the kitchen, talks to the chef, and everything like that. But we finish our meal. This is, I guess, January, so it's pretty close to spring training. And we finish our meal, and he orders three desserts. Okay, and he says, as they come, I'm not going to eat these. I'm, you know, I'm working to get in shape right now. But he looks at me, he's like, but you. <laughs> you look like you enjoy dessert. <laughs> and I'm you, just like, you have all three. And I'm just like, well, thank you for ordering me three desserts, Carl. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you at this moment. Wait, who else was at the table? Just the two of you? No, we had uh, we had we had several other people there. But did you eat all the desserts? I, I dabbled. I, <laughs> no, I'm, not even, I'm not even that much of a dessert you person. You couldn't let him down, <laughs> though. It would have been rude uh, if you said, "I don't want the dessert." Well, this was before I knew that he was like a maven of the pastry <laughs> the <pastry's> world. <laughs> Gosh, this is something that I need to look into further. You should. Um, obviously, some things going on with him right now, so we may not see him around for quite some time, unfortunately, because he's, he's a great baseball mind, but obviously uh, yeah, some rough things happened. A favorite baseball player of all time. Your favorite? Favorite baseball player of all time. On the field or off the field? It's just the On, the, and then, I then mean, he was the fun desserts. to work with. Yeah, and he bought my love. What do you want? All right, so what's coming up in Yankee Magazine? What can we, have, we, look we, have, to? we have an issue that just came out last week. And it has, no surprise, Garrett Cole on the cover. Um, it's the Shocker. same. How'd you guys come up with that? You know what? We, we just worked Very. for a long time. Or You know what? It was the third option. Let's do Garrett Cole. <laughs> um, I think every magazine this year is probably going to have some Garrett Cole. Yeah. Like, <laughs> if it's not front and center, it's going to be like on the side little picture and for more on Garrett Cole. This right? one very much is front and center, believe it or not. Uh, but no, we have, we have uh, so that, that's the cover. It's also sold at Steinbrenner Field as the spring training program. That has a cover that's a drone shot. That's really cool, actually, of all the fields there. Oh, cool. um, so that one's out. We're working on some other stuff for, you know, April, May. May, June, all the months of the baseball season. But the big thing we're working on right now is we are really expanding the Yankees Magazine podcast network. I was going to ask you about that. I, when did that start? And f first of all, before we do that, how can people get Yankee Magazine if they don't already have we're it? We're the best. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yes. You can get Yankees Magazine by going to <laughs> yankees.com slash publications or by calling 800-GO-YANKS. If you would like to read our long form content, <laughs> oh <my God>. yankees.com <laughs> slash magazine. So shameless. And if I Absolutely. were anywhere close to good at editing, while he's saying that, there'd be like a little 1-800 number and all this. But, uh, you know, work in progress here is, is what we would like to the say. The thought that counts. It really is. That's what they say with all internet things. It is the thought that counts. Go get your Yankees magazine today. Uh, but the podcast, you guys have just started that not too long ago. How did that come about? So we started the podcast. I, I can't believe it. This is actually going to be our fourth year doing no, it. No, really? It, it that is. long? But it's, it's been wow. very... You know, just kind of something that we were doing internally, trying to, you know, build a little bit of, you know, give some backstories to the things we were writing, interview some people here and there. This year, we are finally expanding it in ways that we're really excited about. We are next week, I don't know when this is going, March 3rd, <laughs> we are going to be launching the Deep to Left with Bucky Dent, which is going to be extremely oh, exciting. Awesome. We have 20 episodes coming with Bucky Dent, just telling stories and being Bucky Dent and... You know, you can imagine that as we get closer to October 2nd, we're going to have some fun stuff going on there. No doubt. But, I mean, you know, the dream, of course, is to get him to do an episode with Aaron Boone to talk about, you know, two fairly interesting Yankees home runs. Uh, so that's going to be launching, and, and we're going to be... I can't... This one I actually can't talk about yet, but we're going to have another one launching during the season. And... We're really excited about it. It's just a really fun way. I have no experience with audio work <laughs> whatsoever. Oh, YouTube is amazing. Well, I really don't either. So, you know, that's what you guess. Yeah. But we're yeah. making it work, we, right? we teach ourselves how to do these things. And it's just uh -huh. a really fun way to tell stories that's different from, you know, the same... 
the traditional, the yeah, the traditional storytelling, or on my end, the traditional yes report that we do. And I, I mean, look at this setup. This is a major, major multi-million dollar production here in my kitchen. Wonderful. <laughs> it is a wonderful kitchen. <laughs> in my multi-million dollars, I mean, maybe six <laughs> or seven dollars. And okay. uh, I think hopefully we'll have audio today. You never know. I, if now, we don't. I do have a little bone to pick with you because I asked you some of your favorite interviews over the years, and you were incorrect in your answer, even though it was an opinion question. <laughs> I just want to tell you, I feel as though you were incorrect. I know what you're going to say here. Here's the <laughs> is There's one issue I have with this. That was another kind of Trojan horse story where I did a story technically about Joe Girardi, but I did it through the lens of the Joe Girardi show with TV's Meredith Morakovitz. And... Um, <laughs> It was, I, I thought it was a very good story. We had some good times on the road together. When he was let go as Yankees manager while it was on did, stands. Did not really withstand the test of time, no. to be honest with you. Not I've, I've had great stories with better uh, shelf lives, but so it goes. Gosh, that has to be, because in the TV world, here today, gone tomorrow, it doesn't necessarily live on. It can live on. Obviously, we have our Yankeeographies and all that stuff, but turn the page the next day. Literally, it is sitting there. You'd have to physically go remove all of those, which has to be a little bit tough. It wasn't ideal. And I mean, I, look, I mean, Joe Girardi, he's doing just fine. And, but he was- With the Phillies now? Yeah. He was great, he was great. That was a fun story to do. Always. I enjoyed getting to know you better. And that was obviously the best interviews I've ever done with Yankees Magazine. 100%, yeah. probably the best 24 than, to 48 hours of, yeah. of your life. Until he was <laughs> not <perfect. laughs> Anything else you'd like to get off your chest before we get going here? I'm absolutely nothing. <laughs> <laughs> You're all out of words. <laughs> You're gonna leave it to the no. Page, what right? I would like to I, I would like to tell everyone to please subscribe to the Meredith Morakovitz unnamed uh, YouTube special. Do you have a name? Because I'm still, you know, kind of trying to. Do you know? Storm. Can, so, n no joke right now. I couldn't even possibly try to because my mind is so fried from trying to name all of the podcasts that right. we're watching. <laughs> that, like, these brainstorming like sessions are driving me insane. Um, but please, Yankees Magazine Podcast, please subscribe. Go anywhere you get podcasts or to yankees.com slash podcast. There is so much subscribing happening right so now. I hope you. people aren't exhausted after this. <laughs> but uh, subscribe to mine. Subscribe to Yankees Magazine Podcast. I don't know. I just pointed at my name here, this. which has no subscription information whatsoever. <laughs> I just like that my name's in lights. <laughs> and on that note. Yes, indeed. Thank you. Thanks for joining me. You're very welcome. <laughs>